Now, keeping them honest, a case of condemning the sin, but not the sinner. The nation's two top Republican lawmakers did just that today about the former president's recent dinner with the anti-Semitic artist Ye and the anti-Semitic Holocaust-denying white nationalist leader Nick Fuentes. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell both condemning the whole dining with a white nationalist thing, but neither one directly condemned the actual person who actually broke bread with the actual white nationalist. And how they each avoided doing it is fascinating and telling. Leader McCarthy simply said something that isn't true. I don't think anybody should be spending any time with Nick Fuentes. He has no place in this Republican Party. I think President Trump uh, came out four times and uh, condemned him and didn't know who he was. Wrong. He didn't do that. Yes, Trump did say he didn't know who Nick Fuentes is. No, he did not condemn him at all. Not once. And while it's impossible to read the man's mind, telling that lie certainly helped Leader McCarthy avoid directly criticizing the former president. It suggested falsely that no criticism was even necessary because, after all, hadn't the former president already done as much himself by condemning Nick Fuentes? Except, of course, he never did. The former president posted about the dinner three times. The first time saying he knew nothing about the anti-Semitic artist's three friends he brought to dinner. Then, a day later, saying, quote, also, I didn't know Nick Fuentes. Finally, most recently saying, quote, he shows up with three people, two of which I didn't know, the other a political person I haven't seen in years. He also gave a statement to Axios saying the anti-Semite artist arrived with a guest whom he'd never met and knew nothing about. And just moments ago on Fox Digital, he said he didn't know Fuentes' views before having dinner with him and again did not condemn those views. Nowhere online or anywhere else on record has the former president condemned Nick Fuentes. Nor have many Republicans directly called Trump out by name for dining with the man. Senator Mitt Romney has. Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchison did. So did former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie and, most notably, former Vice President Mike Pence. President Trump was wrong uh, uh, to give uh, a white nationalist uh, um, an anti-Semite and a Holocaust denier a seat at the table. And uh, I think he should apologize for it, uh, and he should denounce those individuals uh, uh, and their hateful rhetoric without qualification. So you wouldn't think it would be so hard just on general principle, but apparently it is. Contrast that with this today from Mitch McConnell as you try to figure out who, if anyone specific at all, he's actually talking about. First, let me just say that there is no room in the Republican Party for anti-Semitism or white supremacy. And anyone meeting with people advocating that point of view, in my judgment, are highly unlikely to ever be elected president of the United States. So see what he did there? Unlike Leader McCarthy, who avoided directly condemning the former president by trotting out a specific and transparent lie, Leader McConnell, who was far more careful about what he says, was generic and opaque. So careful, so generic, and so opaque that when asked to follow up by CNN's Manu Raju, he not only continued to keep his pointing finger pointed away from Donald Trump, he won't even rule out voting for the man again. In light of what you said, that there's no room in your party for anyone who harbors these anti-Semitic views, if Donald Trump wins the Republican nomination, would you support him? Look, let me just say again, there is simply no room in the Republican Party for anti-Semitism or white supremacy. And that would apply to all of the leaders in the party who will be seeking offices. So only the sin, never the sinner. The former president, though, he has no trouble naming names. In that interview tonight with Fox Digital, he certainly did, attacking Senator McConnell by name. Joining us now, CNN senior political commentator, a former top Obama advisor, David Axelrod, also CNN political commentator Scott Jennings, who was close to Leader McConnell and served as special assistant to the president in the George W. Bush administration. Scott, when we spoke last night, right at this time, you said you expected McCarthy would take the temperature of his comment 
before commenting in that, quote, that's the one thing about these guys in leadership is they tend to take the temperature of the people they represent before they make comments. So these comments he made, the sort of the, the half hedge and then lie there, what does that tell you about the temperature he found? Well, I, what I said was I thought they would both consult with the members of their conference and come out and make statements today. I was right. Both made statements, both clearly and unequivocally stated that people like Nick Fuentes and the hateful ideology that he uh, talks about has no place in the Republican Party. They both said that today. So uh, I was glad to hear that. Regarding the condemning four times, I don't know what he was doing there. I got the feeling he was confused about the difference between condemning and saying, I don't know who it is. But either way, that's not true. Mm -hmm. Trump hasn't condemned it. And I suspect that he won't because this is his pattern. He does dumb stuff and then he tightens down and never quite, you know, figures out a way back to uh, to doing the right thing. And um, uh, but that's why it's important that a lot of Republicans have done the right thing here, like McConnell, like McCarthy, and clearly and unequivocally stated there's no room for this in the Republican Party whatsoever. Well, McCarthy either made something up or the most charitable version of it is was confused, as you say there. Does that indicate to you that he's still trying to walk some line or trying still to curry favor with some part of his caucus that doesn't like the idea of criticizing having dinner with a white nationalist? I think what he said was very clear about saying this ideology has no place in the Republican Party. He wants no part of it. And I think that, you know, that, that was that was the best message he could deliver beyond that. I, look, I, you know, I, I think I, I don't know how much more clearly <laughs> you could say, I don't want this party that I represent and I plan to be the Speaker of the House of this Republican Party. I, I, I don't know how much more clearly you could say I don't want any part of it. And that's that's what he should have done. Right. I mean, you could do it without making something up. Um, David Axelrod, your assessment of the a little bit of the verbal gymnastics, particularly from Kevin McCarthy. Well, look, here's a situation. Kevin McCarthy still isn't uh, guaranteed that he's going to be Speaker of the House. He needs uh, Donald Trump's support to become Speaker of the House, and he's going to need Donald Trump's support uh, because Trump has sway over that group of that small, smaller group of legislators who are committed to him, the Freedom Caucus uh, folks. So he is, you know, he is twisting himself in all kinds of knots here to try and not offend Trump, uh, but say enough to condemn anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial uh, and so on. So he may not become Speaker of the House, John, but he could get a spot in Cirque du Soleil by the time this thing is done. And Scott's absolutely right. Scott not only said last night that both Republican leaders should. He also predicted that they would say something today. Absolutely, Scott yeah. did that. But but again, McCarthy, it, it does seem like a man in his position knows what he's doing when he says those kind of things, and there was some kind of deliberate signal. Oh, perhaps. there's no question about it. Uh, listen, um, if you, uh, Scott said they couldn't have been more forthright in condemning this. Well, you know, Pence was more forthright. Uh, Hutchinson was more forthright. Uh, there, you know, the fact of the matter is that the former president sat down with these folks, and if you're not willing to condemn that, then you're 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 being evasive. And I think that they're doing they're, they're navigating their own caucuses. They're navigating. You know, this is the same story we've seen for some time. I think the glacier is melting here, and and Trump is more vulnerable than he's ever been. There's blood in the water, and people are a little bit more venturesome than they've been. But still, uh, you know, they they were very very cautious today, in my view. David Axelrod, Scott Jennings, our thanks to both of you. We'll get more 100% predictions from Scott in the future, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> next.